Carrie Roberts here, and in this atomic spotlight, we're going to look at UAC bypasses, UAC standing for user account control. Let's show you what that is to make sure we're all on the same page. So you have probably seen this before, but when we run something as an administrator or try to install something, like here we'll run PowerShell as an administrator, this prompt that we get is UAC, user account control. So we can say yes or no. This is just a warning for users that something uh, something is going to run with full control of the computer. So if you weren't expecting this thing or don't trust this thing to do stuff on your computer, you wouldn't want to say yes. So this UAC gets in the way for attackers and malware because they want to run stuff with elevated privileges, with administrative privileges to perform their hack. and they don't want this user account control to pop up here because it's suspicious. And if somebody doesn't click yes, then they won't be able to run their code. So the attackers want to bypass this. So we're going to go ahead and say no, and it doesn't open PowerShell. Let's go look at Atomic Red Team. Atomic Red Team is a library of scripted cyber attacks that we've been looking at in our Atomic Red Team spotlights. Today we're looking at MITRE technique T1548, sub-technique number two, which is abuse elevation control, abuse elevation control mechanism bypass user access control. Okay, so if we scroll down here in Atomic Red Team, we see multiple ways. We see one through do, 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 23 different ways to bypass user account control. There's a lot more than that that are available and work, but these are how many have been added to Atomic Red Team. It's kind of an ever-changing landscape because you find something that works and then that may be patched. So let's see. Today we're going to look at bypasses executed in a way that they were implemented in a project called UAC me. So if we look at this test number 10, it's UAC me bypass method number 23. And there's a link in here to the UAC me project. It's a GitHub project by H Firefox. I have that open here in this other tab. And what this is, is just a library full of UAC bypasses implemented into a single executable. And when you run this executable, there are, um, you can tell it which method to use. So if we look at this readme as a markdown file, we can see all the different methods. So each method has listed its author, its type of hijack, and some notes about whether it works currently or what versions of Windows it works on. So we see method one all the way down through how many methods are implemented in UAC me. Wow, 76. So that atomic test number 10 that we're looking at implements method 23. Let's look at that one. So method 23 is authored by Leo Davidson. It does a DLL hijack. So we're going to go through, we're not going to look or talk about the specifics of these methods. We're just curious whether these seven or eight tests that have been added to atomic red team for UA by C bypass work and what the telemetry might look like for each of them if we were trying to detect that this happened. So UAC bypass is something, sometimes you get some legitimate scripts trying to do the bypass so that they can do their functions, but many times if you see a UAC bypass, it's an indicator of malware or an attacker in your environment. So it's something we wanna keep an eye on. As we noted, there's only a handful of the UAC me bypasses within Atomic Red Team. There's some of the more popular ones, ones that at the time they were given to Atomic Red Team were still functioning on updated OSs. So let's check that out to today to see if they're still working. 
So to do that, we're going to open PowerShell. We already have Atomic Red Team installed and the Invoke Atomic Red Team execution framework, which means we can use the command Invoke Atomic Test. We give it the technique number T1548, sub technique number two. And let's say show details brief, just to list the, all the tests we saw on the web. And we see the 23 tests and we're interested in all the UAC me bypass ones for a demo today. So we see method 23, 31, 33, 34, 39, 56, 59, and 61. Let's take a look at test number 10, our first UAC me bypass test. Test number 10, and we'll show the full details. Okay, for this one, it's again Leo Davidson, method number 23 from UAC me. And all it's going to do is run this executable that's been compiled with only method number 23 in it. So we just run that executable. It runs method 23. So we could copy and paste this out into a command prompt, or we can just use our execution framework to do that, run that executable for us. So let's do take off the show details and see what happens when we run this test. Oh, before we do that, I do want to show you in the details that there were some prerequisites down here. It says the UAC me executable. So this 23 a Kagi 64, however you pronounce that needs to be on disk in the expected location, which is temp UAC me. So if we do a listing of the temp directory, We can see all the um, specific executables that we could use. Again, not all of these are implemented in Atomic Red Team, but if we wanted to do more comprehensive tests on UAC bypasses, we could run all of these various executables. So we have all that here. If we didn't, we could run this command that we had before. Instead of show details, we could say get, pre get prereqs. And it would download a zip file from Atomic Red Team with all those executables, unzip it, and then we'd be ready to go. So let's go ahead and run test number 10, which is UAC me bypass method 23. And we get an administrative, actually two administrative command prompts come up. And there wasn't any UAC bypass that needed to be run. So if an attacker was using this method, they could have called um, this command prompt with some parameters of the commands they wanted to run, and those would run as an admin. We also get this uh, kind of leftover event viewer that popped up, a byproduct of this method. So that worked as a UAC me bypass. Let's step it up to test number 11 a different method of UAC bypass. And here we get three administrative command prompts. That works. And here's uh, a byproduct of that UAC bypass. Okay, let's try method number 12. We do get a command prompt, but it's actually not administrative. We don't see that administrator in the beginning. We see this pop up event viewer again, but it didn't actually work as a UAC bypass. That one looks like it's hung that process until it times out, which with invoke atomic test is a two minute timeout. So I'm just going to open a new PowerShell window and pick up where we left off. I think we were doing method 13, so we'll go to 14. Okay, administrative command prompt uh, using Fubuki apparently. So that method works. We get an error. 
but it still started administrative command prompt, which is what we were trying to get. And let's see, we got a couple more to do. Method 15, or atomic test 15, method 56. Uh, we don't see anything here. So this uh, doesn't seem to work because we don't see anything pop up administrative. So we move on to 16. Administrative command prompt. And the last UAC me bypass that we were looking at today, executing with Atomic Red Team is Atomic Test 17, Method 61. And that one works too. So it looks like, uh, how many tests did we have? We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So of the eight methods, it looked like six are still working. And with the automation in Atomic Red Team, we could easily emulate this and use that to build and test our detections. Go ahead and take some time to check out many of the other options within Atomic Red Team for emulating UAC bypass, or actually doing it in this case. Um, we did, we played with the UAC me ones that are built into executables. These other ones, just instead of executing the UAC bypass from executable, a custom executable, they just call the commands directly to do the bypass, like from the command prompt or PowerShell. So lots of great things to look into here. These bypasses are very common in malware. So it's a good thing to be familiar with and watch for. That's it for Atomic Spotlight today. If you want to learn about all things Atomic Red Team and attack emulation, check out my course on attack emulation from Anti-Siphon Training.